should we talk about some actionable stuff? Yeah, from, go on then. Let's talk about some actionable stuff from the shed, so from practising to the stage. Yeah, what, uh, knowing repertoire, like being having material to play with other people. Like, and, and also knowing it by memory so you can get out of the stand and start interacting with people and put your attention in what's going on rather than in, you know, that... Uh, so like learning some songs. Learning some songs, 100% right from the start. You need to... And learning chord sequences, you know, taking that next step to be able to understand what chord sequences are and create your own bass lines so you actually have something that you can play. One thing know. that I really got my first guitar teacher, um, Joe Bishishko, if you're watching this, um, lives up in Carlisle. He's a... Super cool dude. Cool, anyway, man. he worked next to my dad. Mm. Uh, my dad worked in a factory at the time, and you know, and I wanted to get into guitar. I went to lessons with Joe, mm. a really great teacher. And my dad used to. This is so old school. He used to pay him a packet of cigarettes. That's how, that's what he used to pay him. Huh. It's like almost go. before money. Yes. Yeah. Here's, here's one. You know, wow. If it was a few hundred years ago, he might have paid him a goat or a sheep. But now, yeah. it like then, it was like a pack of cigarettes. We'd moved on to cigarettes. Anyway, right. so used to put, yeah. Anyway, this is nothing to do with the story. Anyway, but if the tax can... man's watching and wants to, like, what's happening <laughs> with your dad again? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> but um, um, so, and I can remember going to Joe, and and he was a great teacher. I can remember him saying. How many songs can you play from the beginning to the end? Yeah. I was like, you know, I was a kid. You know, and you were like, I, I, I was like, <laughs> and he was, I was like, none. He was like, none. Yeah. I was like, I can't play any. You know, it was a really weird. So, my question to you guys is how many songs can you play from the top right to the bottom, right the way through by memory? It's a really important thing. And as Jeff said, moving from the shed to the stage, it, you know, it, it's, it's definitely something that you need to take into consideration. His repertoire is super important. Give me something else. Then. Rhythmic strength, mate. I think that like people get so caught up with what chord, what note is coming next that you lose track about. The guys that we love to play with are the guys that just, you know, have a great feel. Have a great feel, and that comes that comes out on on the bass. You know, that's the 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 one thing that you can do to separate yourself from everyone else. I mean, one of them is to have a hu know a huge repertoire of music. That will mean that you can just play with anyone, and, and then that will make it easier. And you, you know, have the confidence to stand away from the chart, close the book. You know, yeah. it can be done. You just got to keep pushing yourself. But rhythmic sort of strength, I, I think more than harmonic strength, I think is. You know, I mean, it's, it's all, frankly, it's all important. You need to be able to play through the chord sequences, but you need to be able to really make sure that you're, at, you're understanding what's going on. And I think the problem is when you're playing on your own, sometimes you develop strange habits, like, for instance, playing through long notes. You know, like you're not counting uh, if there's a phrase and perhaps there's a, a note is being held and you, and you cut it short every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't realise unless you're playing with other people, you know, and then all of a sudden it starts to rub. And, you know, like you think about the drummers that are great, it's the guys that make everything feel and sound fantastic because they've got a brilliant feel. And yeah. that, you know, for me is something that, that stands out. And particularly with newer students who are, are not used to playing in ensembles, if I hear someone who's rhythmically weak, uh, you yeah, know, that yeah, yeah, really yeah. stands out. Yeah, so groove. Yeah, well, groove, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah having groove in mind. Uh, one of mine would be, I saw you looking at me there, like, you, you next, Divine. Yeah, go on. Uh, one of mine would be awareness of the band. Yeah. Right, so in terms of... You're you're not in the shed anymore. You're on yeah. a stage, and there's there's two, That's three, true, yeah. four, sixteen big yeah. band. If you you know, obviously seventeen a big band, but there's a lot more people involved in what's going on at that moment in time, other than you. And in the shed, it's a very insular environment, and all you're generally thinking yeah. about is what you're playing. You, the scale, the, the chord sequence you're playing with, the backing track you're playing with, mm. but what you don't take into consideration in a live situation when you first, you know, when you're when you first start playing is you're you're one of many now. Mm. It's not just you. You've got to be in terms of what you were talking about. You've got to be locking in with the drums, okay? With yeah. you've got to be aware of what the keys player is doing and how that affects what you've got to you know how it affects what you're doing. You've got to. You've got to have your ears wide open in terms of knowing the the musical sandwich of what an ensemble is. So if you think about the, you know, the drums on the bottom, then you've got your bass, and then you've got your keys and your mm. guitar, and then you've got your vocals, and you know, and it's being aware of that. So being aware of it all from a you know from a sound perspective, I think really helps, uh, and and just helps you kind of because what you want to do when you do move to that stage is you want the band to sound like one unit not all you know it needs to sound like one unit i can remember i was at a uh, i don't want to go on too much of a tangent here but i was uh, doing a workshop 
um, as a student mm. um, over here in the UK. And there was a great guitar player, t- t- you know, Mike Walker. Mm. And I've talked about him on my lessons before, Mike Walker. And I can remember the drummer was getting a, uh, getting a bit of a roasting from the rest of the band. You know, and we were all students. We mm. were like, you know, raging from mm. you know, the youngest time might have been like 17 or 18, right up to sort of like guys in their 60s and 70s. It was sort of like this. Anybody could go. As mm. long as you were a student, you could go. You didn't need to be a student at uni, university. You just needed to, you know, mm. sort of like a week-long retreat type of thing, right? Mm. And, and Mike just nailed everybody. He was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And this is such a common thing, right? People blame the drummer for the band. Mm. Like that. You know, oh, the drummer's bad. You know, it's his mm. job. To keep time. How many times have you heard that? Mm. It's the drummer's job to keep time. That's absolute BS. It's mm. everybody's job. It's a unit. And the whole unit needs to be grooving together. It's not the drummer's job to keep anybody in time. Okay? It's not the drummer's job. Man, if mm. it was, they'd be having a hard time because there's a lot of people that can't play with a groove. Mm. You know, it's the unit. And that unit is, you know, it's, a, it's its own entity. It's not, you know, just sort of like lots of different parts. And that's when you, when you hear a great band sounded freaking tight that's why because it's existing as one unit and all of those interlinking parts the guitar the drums the keys are all linking together and forming that unity so that's the first thing um in terms of you know moving from the stage from moving from the shed to the stage i think people need to take into consideration the second thing is and really keying into this is keep your eyes open and Mm. communicate with people Mm. again again so so many people are sort of like and this is like like I've taught at workshops all over the world, right? Mm. And this is one thing I see so many times. You get a, you know, a bunch of students together. You, you, let's do a tune, right? Mm. Let's do Chameleon, Watermelon Manor. You know, one mm. of them sort of like simple tunes that you, are great to use with students, okay? And you hand out the lead sheets and then everybody starts playing and 90% of the students will just head down or, or looking at the fingerboard. Mm. I'm just like, whoa, 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 what about everybody else? You know, mm. it's really important to keep eye contact with these guys. Now, you know, if you're, if you're a band that are rehearsing together, you know, every week on week on week, you know, you'll get a bit of a vibe going where you won't have to do that all the time. But when you get on that stage, and especially like Danny was saying, mm. you know, it's just guys getting up with, you know, it's a scratch yeah, what band. What song do you know? Yeah. What song do you know? Let's do mm. this. Keeping your eyes open and your ears, but your eyes open and looking around for cues, you know, um, you know, going you can into get a courses, lot of visual endings, information. intros, oh, it's you know, insane. Especially with yeah, like drums and, and when, because the problem is that everybody, if they're, if they're looking down, they're all thinking about, okay, there's a space coming up in the next, in the tune here. I'm going to step in with this fill. But the point is that everybody else might be thinking about doing thing. that as well. <laughs> and you might want to contrast what the drums are doing. If the drums are filling that space, if they're, if they're stepping out at that point, then you're probably going to want to keep it, keep it steady and keep, you know, keep the, uh, the things going on at home. And it's really being able to put your attention into everybody else. And you can get so many visual uh, clues. And of course, there's so many kind of, you know, oral cues as well that you'll get from listening to mm. what's going on. But but being able to like, yeah, just develop that taste, so you're really playing as a team, and uh, yeah, everyone's working together. And just a, just a little mm. sort of like an add-on to that as well yeah. that's really helped me out is try and identify if you are in a situation where you're getting up on stage with guys you haven't played with before. Try and identify who is the natural musical director in that situation. Mm. Who's the natural MD? That's who's going to lead point. the band? That's a great point. There's always just yeah, just to sort mm. of like you go into any organisation, right? It's not just a free for all. Mm. Generally, there's one guy that's kind boss of man. like holding Travis. boss man. Yeah, yeah, boss man Travis. <laughs> there's one guy that's kind of like holding it all. He's steering the ship. Okay, yeah. and in a lot of the time, you'll have that in in musical scenario. All the time, you'll have it in musical scenarios. You know, um, but, so try and identify who that is. Just a little tip. A lot of the time, it's keys players are, are generally quite good at it, or can be. Um, drummers, obviously, because it's quite a physical instrument mm. and there's a lot of movement, they are good at cueing things, you know. Here we go into the chorus, you know, stuff so, like that. Yeah, but, people shaping what they're doing. Yeah, this. try try yeah. and look at, and we can I can name, you know, a great drummer, actually, that's fantastic for this and has had a great career just because of the, he's a great visual communicator when he plays. Um, but try and look out for who is that guy that's leading the leading the charge mm. in terms of being that, you know, the natural musical director, even if he hasn't been labelled it. But if 
if everybody has got their heads down at the floor, maybe you're the natural musical director. Maybe mm. you're listening to this, and then next oh. week or tomorrow, you'll end up in this situation. You're looking around. There is no natural leader for that. Well, maybe that needs to be you, and you need to step forward. You don't need to step forward verbally so much, but you need to be like, this is it, got right? Here we go. You know, you've, when you you've got a people, repertoire together, you know it. You look at people like John Patitucci play, and if he's like grooving away playing electric, particularly on electric, because there's something about the way he moves around, he's really sort of, you know, like kind of serious looking yeah. dude who's getting into it. And there's so much information coming from it. When you play with somebody like that, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be really paying attention to what's going on. It, it's, and it's and just, like the, yeah. la- the worst thing you can do is have your head down. Yeah. And you want to be engaging. Like, um, I played with uh, Dennis Rollins the other day, a friend of ours, a fantastic trombone player, and he's just so, so, so good. He's a beast. And, it's, um, was, and I was really like trying to bring, you know, I was trying to keep it together because he's so good. bring he's, the goods. He was, he was so good. And he was, when I was taking solos and stuff, he was right in my face. The whole time he was just right, like, what have you got? Yeah. And he was just trying, because he was trying to bring the best out of me. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And he wasn't just sort of like over to the side, you know, not particularly bothered. Yeah. And, and it was the same with every member. When anyone was soloing, and he was always like engaging what was going on. Yeah, yeah. And he if you don't know who level. Dennis Rollins is, he plays with Maceo Parker. He's yeah. a fantastic... Fantastic player. And he brought the level right up. You yeah. know, I never play as well as when I'm playing with people like that who are way better than me. I watched you know, George like, Garzone once playing yeah. with his drummer at LCM, at Leeds College right. of Music. Man, he was just in the drummer's face. Yeah. He was like playing in his face. I'm yeah. not even kidding. Yeah. He was actually sure. soloing in the drummer's face. Like, yeah. It was, it was like really great to watch, actually. The drummer was loving it. He was just like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so listen, I mean, we've, we've kind of covered a lot of ground here, but make sure you yeah. go and check out Danny's seminars because they're, they're happening and his song analysis, one that we've got the recording, and the next one that he does will also be sort of elaborating on that. And of course, Scott's lesson about uh, the role of the basses. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.